We're going to multiply fractions and mix numbers in this lesson. And besides knowing how to multiply fractions correctly, we've got to also know how to take mixed numbers, change them to improper fractions, multiply those fractions, and then change it back into a mixed number if we need to. We've also got to remember um, our integer rules for multiplying and dividing numbers. So the first thing we're going to start off with is two fractions. And what I teach all of my students to do is when you look at these two fractions and we're multiplying them, let's make sure that they are simplified or reduced before we multiply. And our rule is that we can reduce anything from the top and the bottom of either fraction. But we can't reduce, let's say, the 5 and the 10 because they're both on the bottom. They're both denominators. You can't reduce denominator and denominator. You can't reduce numerator and numerator. But you are able to reduce anything from the top to anything on the bottom. So the first thing that I see is the number 2 and the number 10. I know that the number, I can take a 2 and I can divide it into this number 2 one time. So I can change that to a 1. That same number 2 will divide into my 10 five times. And so now I've actually recreated my multiplication problem as 1 times 3 as my numerator and 5 times 5 as my denominator. And I'm going to write it just as a whole fraction here, in one fraction line. Because now what we can see is we're just going to multiply 1 times 3. I kind of like to draw an arrow through them. And I'm also going to multiply my denominators 5 times 5. And so I'm going to get an answer as for my numerator of 3, and my denominator is going to be 25. And the nice part about this answer is, not only is it correct, but it's completely simplified. And that's because we went and we simplified at the very beginning. We went ahead and reduced that to, and also the 10. Alright, let's step it up to mixed numbers. Now, a lot of people freak out when they see mixed numbers. They don't know what to do. And not only do we have mixed numbers, but we have a positive mixed number and a negative mixed number. So we've got to watch out for that. Let's take the 1 and 3 fourths first, and let's just talk about the process of changing it to an improper fraction. Um, really what we have here with the number 1 is we have 4 out of 4. And so what you've got to understand, because our denominator says to have one whole, we have four pieces that make up a whole. And so the number one in this case is equal to four over four. Well, take a look at this. If I have four over four, and then I also have three over four, how much do I have total? Well, I've got seven fourths, don't I? Yeah, that's correct. And so I've changed my one and three-fourths to seven-fourths. Now a lot of teachers, what they teach is they start here and they say multiply four times one, which makes sense because we have one whole there. So that gives us our four-fourths and then add the three, which gives us a total of seven-fourths. I like to split it apart and make sure that you understand that that one whole really is equal to four-fourths. Four-fourths and three-fourths gives us seven-fourths. We've got a different denominator here. So that means our one's going to be different. Our negative one, in this case, is going to be different. If we had one whole negative, that's the same thing as 2 over 2. And so really what we have here, we have a negative 1 half and a negative 2 halves, which is going to give us, if we put it all together, how many halves do we have that are negative? We have a total of 3 halves. Okay, we're going to multiply these two numbers together. So, we're going to use the same rules that applied up top. We're going to see first, is there anything that can reduce from the top to the bottom? And it doesn't look like it can. 7 can't reduce with 2, and 3 can't reduce with 2. Same thing, 7 and 3 can't reduce with the 4. There's nothing that goes into both of them. So, I'm going to multiply. And I'm actually going to rewrite 7 times negative 2. 3, and I'm going to multiply 4 times 2. Now, we know that a positive times a negative is going to give us a negative answer. I'm just going to keep my negative up top. You could have put it on the bottom if you want, 
but the one thing you don't want to do is make both of them negative because that would change our answer to a positive. 7 times 3 is going to give us 21 and since I'm multiplying 7 times negative 3 I get negative 21 4 times 2 is 8. Now we're going to change negative 21 eighths back into a mixed number. For every 8 that we have we get to make one whole negative. Well I have 21 of these negatives. If we jump count by 8s, 8, 16, 24, 32, what I see is I'm able to get up to 16. So basically I'm able to make two holes. So two whole negatives. And how many are left over? If I got up to 16 and I count from 16 to 21, it's going to give me 5 out of 8 left over. And so we have our answer of negative 2 and 5 eighths. All right, it's your turn. Copy down 3 fifths times 2 ninths, and also 2 and 1 fourth times 1 and a half. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is zoom in on 3 fifths times 2 ninths, and as I said previously, I'm going to look to reduce. Anything from the numerator can reduce anything from the denominator, top to bottom, bottom to top. And what I see that can be reduced is I see a number that can divide into both 3 and 9 to make those numbers smaller. 3 can divide into 3 one whole time, and 3 divides into 9 three whole times. And so my new multiplication problem is 1 times 2 over 5 times 3. And when I multiply this, 1 times 2 and 5 times 3, I'm going to get the reduced correct answer of 2 fifteenths. If you got that correct, Nice job. The more difficult one was 2 and 1 fourth and 1 and 1 half. And so let's take a look at what this number 2 really means. Here's our denominator of 4. If I have 2 holes, that means I have 2 4 fourths. And then I have a 1 fourth at the end. So how many fourths do I have total? Well, let's add them up. Four. 8, 9. So I have 9 fourths as my mixed number. 1 and a half. Let's go ahead and talk about this 1. Our denominator here is 2. So if I have 1 whole, that means I have 2 over 2. And then I still have this 1 half. How many halves do I have? I'm going to add the 2 and the 1 together. So I have 3 halves. Okay. These are the two numbers that you're going to multiply together. So I'm going to take a look. I don't see anything from the numerator that can reduce anything from the de denominator. And so I'm going to, before I multiply, I'm going to rewrite the problem really quick. 9 times 3 as my numerator. 4 times 2 is my denominator. And I'm going to get the improper fraction of 27 eighths. Now, for every 8 that I have, I can make 1 whole. So jump counting by eights comes into play here, making sure that we understand. Jump counting once by eights gives us eight. Twice by eights gives us 16. Third time gives us 24. Eight, six, and 24. Fourth time gives us 32. 32 is too much. It looks like it's going to make three holes. And then if we just count up from the number 24 to see how many more we have left, out of our 27. So we're going to count what's left. We count up from 24, 25, 26, 27. So that leaves us with 3. So we end up with the fraction 3 eighths. 3 and 3 eighths is our answer.